you have a talk where you go over the best practices uh, for working with third-party scripts on, on websites. Is it actually possible to run a modern website without third-party scripts? It is, but it, that, is. it is, but it comes with a price, I would say. So it's definitely about you have to figure out as a company, a website owner, do you want to do uh, buy versus uh, build? That's something you have to decide. You can build your own third party or the techniques that third party scripts do, like tracking or analytics or something like that. You would have to have people who are dedicated to do this in your company, so the development task force is probably very high up in this context. Um, and some people actually do it for privacy reasons. They don't want to expose their data. I know of a few companies that come up with their own tracking systems. Uh, so in this sense, it is possible, but you will have to, uh, it will be a struggle, especially also with when you have to deal with marketing and sales. I've also had that experience that, you know, there's another third party provider that comes up to marketing and says, hey, do you want to do, you want to do this in your, on your website? So it's tough to, to battle or have that battle with marketing and sales, but it is possible. But you have to do it all yourself. It's you have all to do internal. it all, exactly. And that, that, that means a lot of time. And I can all. imagine there's quite an allure for certain scripts of, oh, I could do this tracking, I could add this thing. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. When did third, third party scripts first emerge? I was trying to think back on when that became a thing and I couldn't remember. And that is, that's a very good question. And when I think back, I would say, so I mean, third party content, third party scripts is about foreign content. So you load foreign content on your website. And I would almost argue it started with the whole Google widgets, Twitter widgets, and also the idea of having an iframe on your website, including somebody else's content on your website. So I think that's that's uh, that's what's happening. Uh, what happened? Um, HTTP archive. So Steve's HTTP archive. I've seen. I mean, unfortunately, HTTP archive only started in 2010 or something. But I uh, ran a query and I looked at the distribution of third-party scripts, and we're definitely seeing an increase. So it's it's going it's going uh, further up. It's sure. continuing to go up. Absolutely, yes, yes. Wow. I thought we would have plateaued oh, by now, uh, but no. No, I think there's more to come for sure. There's more foreign content on your website than your own. Exactly, exactly. Um, what's the single most important thing web publishers should do when they're actually evaluating a new third party script? So when marketing comes and says, yeah. we desperately want this yeah. thing, yeah. What, what's the first step? Um, I would definitely ask the question, how much do you care about performance and what do you do to give me a performance script? Um, if they can't answer that or if they're struggling or if they, for example, don't use asynchronous options for you to include your script, I would walk away or even you know, push them or force them and say, hey, I need to know how you're doing this. Even uh, how they behave in terms of uh, um, uptime and downtime. I mean, if you're, you're the third party script provider goes down, what do you do? How do they help you? Another thing I think is very important is uh, that third party publishers, uh, providers, sorry, um, actually help us with the integration of the scripts. Do a follow up and say, hey, yeah, you did this right, you did this wrong, right? So. Are there common red flags associated with scripts? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, you know, you, you, you don't want to load it uh, synchronously a script, especially JavaScript. So that could totally block the rendering of your page if the third party uh, goes down. Um, so you want to make sure that, yeah, asynchronous options are there um, and um, run it, like test it with, with web page test org or something, assuming, you know, the site would go down or something. The scripts that publishers already have, based off of what you're saying, it sounds like there's plenty of them already on websites and it's only going up. How, how should publishers, developers, manage the scripts they already have? I assume it's not a set it and forget it kind of thing. Um, no, no, no. And I think it's always worth revisiting what you have and what you do. Even I've had that with my previous company. Uh, if you don't monitor, if you don't check on the scripts, they could go bad. So in this case, I would say run it through webpagetest.org. Um, see how it behaves, always as it is here with Velocity, measure first and then optimize later. But you have to measure it, you have to monitor and then you'll figure out what's wrong and what's right with your script. Would alerts help with that? Um, alerts for sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's again, that's a good point. We had that happening with uh, with the CBC where our peer research work, where we had an increase, a spike on load time and yeah. all of a sudden we noticed through our monitoring system, oh, something is off, there's a script that is not behaving properly and then we reacted on that. Yeah. Right. So they can go bad. It's not. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you okay. don't. Uh, that's that's the that's the main point. Monitor consistently. Don't put it in and forget about right. it. Right. Yeah. You have a book coming out yes. about uh, lean websites. Yep. 
Is, are you going to be talking about third-party scripts on that? Absolutely. So that's that's definitely a topic I will be covering. I will also give a lot of tips how to you know include third-party scripts properly, what to look out for. And I kind of wrap that up in my chapter bootcamp, which is all about, as the title says, lean websites, making sure that your bootcamp forces you to uh, slim down your website and increase the yeah page load time to be faster. Great. Yeah. Last question for you. Sure. What people or projects are you following these days? Um, I'm a big fan of HTTP Archive, BigQuery, uh, Ilya Grigorik's uh, BigQuery um, that I can use against HTTP Archive. I love to answer uh, questions such as what's the distribution of third party versus first party scripts. So those tools help me very much. Follow the perf matters tag. So I'm always still very uh, performance uh, interested for sure. Great. Well, thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome.